Hello everyone, this is Remlegs from 40k Theories, and welcome to this new episode of 40k Lore for Newcomers. For this episode, nominated on Patreon by Brandon A, we will be taking a brief look at the High Lords of Terror. This video will be a brief overview for certain events that may be explored in greater depth within additional videos in the future. So without further ado, let's begin. The Imperium! How mighty its aspect! How far-reaching its boundaries! As one world dies, ten more are brought into the fold! Fear us, for we count the lives of planets, not men! The High Lords of Terror is the collective term given to the twelve individuals who serve as the most influential and powerful members of the Senatorum Imperialis, a political institution which serves as the highest governing body within the Imperium of Man. The main purpose of the High Lords is to rule the Imperium in the God Emperor's name, implementing policies, codifying laws and carrying out acts that they deem to be in accordance with his will. Such acts can range from the mundane, such as drafting new galactic taxation policies or sentencing an individual to death, to more era-defining ones such as establishing new space marine chapters or authorising the launch of military crusades. The High Lords of Terra can trace their origins back to the later years of the Terran Unification Wars, to the creation of the Magister's Temporal. One of the first global civilian attempts at government in millennia, the Magister's Temporal were tasked with establishing the political infrastructure of the nascent Imperium, albeit with a far more limited scope and degree of authority than their successors. In time, the original four Magister offices would be later reorganised into an organisation known as the Lord Civilian, with the greatest of the number being granted the title of High Lord Civilian. As the Imperium continued to grow and expand, the number of High Lords serving on the Council of Terra would also increase. Following the civil war known as the Horus Heresy, the Council of Terra would be formally reorganised into what is now the Senatorum Imperialis. Today, there are 12 High Lords currently active within the Imperial government at any given time, though only 9 of their number holds a permanent seat on the Imperial Council. This is due to the organisations that these particular lords represent being both important and ultimately necessary for the Imperium's continued operation. The nine permanent seats on the Council are the following. The Master of the Administratum, who oversees the bureaucratic infrastructure of the Imperium. The Ecclesiarch of the Adeptus Ministorum, the leader of the Imperial Church. The Fabricator General of Mars, the head of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Grand Provost Marshal of the Adeptus Arbites, the enforcers of Imperial Law. The Grand Master of Assassins from the Officio Assassinorum. The Master of the Astronomicon, who oversees the maintenance of the Psychic Beacon that allows Imperial ships to navigate the depths of warp space. The Paternoval Envoy of the Navigator Houses, an institution that provides beings capable of using the aforementioned Astronomicon to guide ships through the warp. The Master of the Adeptus Astrotelepathica, an organisation that oversees the recruitment and training of sanctioned psychers. And a representative of the Imperial Inquisition. The following three rotating seats on the Council can be occupied by any of the following individuals. The Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes, the personal bodyguards of the Emperor himself. The High Abbess of the Adeptus Sororitas, an all-female subdivision of the Adeptus Ministorum. Cardinal or Cardinals of the Holy Synod of Terra, the most powerful subordinate organisation within the Ministorum. The Lord Commander Militant of the Astra Militarum, the Imperium's largest military force the Lord High Admiral of the Imperial Navy, the Lord Commander Solar, who oversees the defence of Segmentum Solar, Speaker of the Chartist Captains, the Merchant Fleets of the Imperium, and the Chancellor of the Estate Imperium, 
the Imperium's record keepers and overseers of the Departmento Munitorum. While a total of 12 High Lords will be active at any given time, it should be noted that there exist thousands upon thousands of other political officials, dignitaries and nobles who play a role within the Senatorum Imperialis, although none of these individuals hold anywhere near the level of power or influence boasted by the High Lords. Despite this, some of these so-called lesser lords, such as that of the Chirurgeon General of the Orders Hospitaller or the Commandant of the Scholar Progenium, are still highly influential individuals in their own right. Historically, the Chairman and de facto leader of the High Lords also held the title of Lord Commander of the Imperium, a position that, up until at least M32, was known more formally as the Lord Gilliman named in honour of the Ultramarine's Primarch, Rebute Gilliman. The role of Lord Commander of the Imperium is also the only position amongst the High Lords to have ever been held by a warrior of the Adeptus Astartes, most famously during the events of the War of the Beast, in where the position was held by consecutive chapter masters of the Imperial Fists. Today, the title of Lord Commander of the Imperium is held by none other than Gilliman himself, who would also go on to adopt the title of Imperial Regent, effectively granting him a degree of power and authority even greater than that afforded by the High Lords. Of all the High Lords, the most powerful of their number would undoubtedly be the Master of the Administratum, one of if not the oldest position of authority within the Imperial Government. Not only does the Master of the Administratum hold sway and control over the majority of the Imperium's civilian and military institutions, but they also maintain their own personal chapter of the Adeptus Astartes through which to enforce their will. This chapter, known as the Minotaurs, is notorious for being both incredibly ruthless and brutal, even by Space Marine standards. Such is the level of control that the Master of the Administratum holds over the Minotaurs, that the chapter will follow their orders without question or hesitation, even if it means coming into conflict with other Loyalist Space Marines or even the warriors of the Adeptus Custodes. And that concludes this edition of 40k Lore for Newcomers. If you liked this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for more content. To those that are new to 40k, we hope you learned something. So leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.